Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Mech Merlin stream. Hope everyone is doing great tonight. I'm seeing a Peter Poppins, a Grizzy, a Sikri, Ranger XML, Anisan, Anonymous, Whale. Who else is here? M. Farseen. Thanks, guys, for joining in. And as you can see from the stream title down below, we are unboxing a group, a, a group by board called the KBD 67 Lite R2. R2. But here we go. Um, following the success of their R1, KBD fans is releasing the KBD 67 Lite again in round two. However, round two will have a few changes. The most apparent change is the color. Instead of just black, white, and smoky black, they now have the addition of transparent, transparent Tiffany, gray and white, and pink. At this point, I do not know what color mine is. I have not opened it at all. So yeah, just to show you guys again, transparent, transparent Tiffany, gray and white, and pink. R1 was only black, white, and translucent black. Another difference is that PCB, there will be two PCBs offered. One will be the wired, which is the KBD67 Mark II RGB V2, and a new PCB, that's Bluetooth's dual mode, right? Um, other, other differences can be noted in the description section here. Let's, let's pump that up so you guys can read it along with me. There we go, see? Um, cherry screw and stabs on the R1. KBD fans, PC screw and stabs. PC stands for polycarb. Um, R1 had a CNC plate. R2 has an injection molded plate. So it's, you know, technically speaking to the end user, to you and me, there shouldn't be a difference in, in typing feel or sound. This should purely just be a KBD fans um, optimization. You know, it's a lot faster and it's a lot cheaper to make an injection molded component. You know, and at the scale that they're producing these, injection molding sounds Sounds the way that so sounds like it's the way to go. Um, the the R1 came pre-assembled. The R2 will not be assembled. Let's see what else? Um, oh yeah, a little bit on on the optional PCB. Optional PCB is based on TMK, so it will not have. Well, you could probably bring it up to QMK, but as it is, there's no QMK or VIA support. Completely different. But yeah, that's it. Um, someone earlier was asking, does it come with with the keycaps? No, it does not. You have to buy them yourself. But the one that they, you know, like they include as a package deal if you were to choose it, is this guy right here, 68 key 9009. Let's, let's open this up. My main concern is like every time that they offer like a 68 key. Will this column be profile correct, right? That is the biggest question. So let me just start off from there first. If I can find them. So in this instance, um, okay, based on what they're showing here, it should be correct. It should be completely correct. Awesome. Awesome, no need to go through the set and make sure that is the case. Awesome, perfect. All right, so unfortunately, unfortunately, KBD fans did not send me the Bluetooth variant. And I know that because look, this is the PCB that they sent me. KBD67 Mark II RGB. It's the Bluetooth PCB. Um, based on what I've found so far, it seems to indicate that it is not compliant with open source licenses. So with that said, um, you guys can look up what GPL is. You can you can look up what open source license is, and you guys can look up why it's bad to not adhere to these licenses. But specifically, as someone who is part of that community and who works on such projects, um, sending me one would have been a pretty bad idea. <laughs> so yeah, here just to show you guys the PCB. This is this is just the wired PCB. 
Wired PCB, you guys have seen this all before. If you own a D65, a KBD67 Mark II, um, KBD67 Lite R1, this is the same PCB. There you go, see, KBD67 Mark II RGB V2, got a reset button, uses Atmega 32U4 microcontroller, hot swaps, um, per key RGB, it's got an ESD protection chip, which, yep, it's right there. ESD protection chip right there. And what else? USB-C, all the good stuff. Gondo raiding me with a party of 15, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gondo. Hope you're doing better from your, from your accident. And thank you for sending your people my way. But yeah, tonight I am unboxing the KVD67 Lite R2. I am I have currently unboxed the R1. I mean, sorry, the uh, the the wired PCB which came with the R1, and is still an option with the R2. Are those kale or gat hot swaps? These should be kale. But here, let me just double check for you, just to be sure. How can you tell? Do they actually say kale on them? Yep, they say kale on them. They say kale. Yep, these are all kale hot swaps. Wired has kale, wireless has scatterons. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was not sent a wireless one for the reasons that I... Which I... I think that's why they didn't send it to me, just because they know I would completely harp on it. Alright, so yeah, that's the PCB. At this point, I've got three of these. <laughs> three of these. But now, the moment you guys have been waiting for! Jayzaz says, does the difference in socket brand make a difference? Um... I don't know yet, actually. I, I have never tried a Gateron hot swap socket, but my my experience with kale hot swap is al is already bad. You know, so it could go either way. Yeah, bets on colors as well. What do you guys think I got? What color do you guys think I got? So once again, um, colors that are available are transparent, black, white, transparent Tiffany, gray and white, and pink. What color do you guys think I got? Pink. Peter Popman says pink. I, I have no idea. This is the first time that I'm opening this. And so this is white on gray. Tiffany. I'm forcing is hoping for pink. Tiffany. Gray and white. Black. Tiffany. 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 All right. Hawaii Voldemort says pink. Tiffany because it's blue for Merlin. I guess. It honestly looks more green to me. But, but I am partially colorblind. I am partially, partially colorblind, so, you know. Tiffany. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let me just unplug my R1 right here. Once again, this is my R1. One of my favorite boards, actually. So that I can have a little bit more space when I unbox. The moment you've all been waiting for. Well, a black one is... I can show you a black one really quick. Here. That's a black one. This is... This is from the R1. It's the same thing, just black. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go, here we go. No more interruptions. Oh! So it comes with a foam of sort for protection, I guess. And then this is different. This is different. Um, the original one, the the original packaging was a plastic sheet. This one's still plastic, but it actually has the KVD Fans logo on it. So that's interesting. That's interesting. That's new. I don't think it's any more protective or like anything. Do that. And it's the usual KB fans packaging. I mean, the carrying case that they have. Not super sturdy. 
if you're wondering. Actually, very, very poorly made, in my opinion. In fact, one of my critiques about it was that the zippers were hard to get around the corners. And... Yeah, there we go. Same issue right here. There we go. Okay. Alright. Last chances for color votes. <laughs> what do you guys think I got? <laughs> I am personally hoping for, let's see, I don't own a pink board, so I'm hoping for pink as well. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Grizzy says, says Tiffany, Pat Whale says black, white. <laughs> Put on some bats. Okay, let's see. Please be pink. Please be pink, please be pink, please be pink, please be pink. Let's work my magic. <laughs> Come on, be pink, be pink, be pink. And here we go, here we go. Boom! It's not pink. <laughs> it's it's uh, Tiffany. <laughs> here we go. It's Tiffany. I got the Tiffany. Well, I like the Tiffany too. I, I was just hoping for pink. Yeah, Tiffany for the win. <laughs> yeah, let's go through all the all the components here really quick. There you go, it comes with your standard USB-C cable. Stabs. Stabs that do not look PC at all. Huh. Oh, 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 never mind, never mind. I misread his message. His last message to me was, Due to the KBD fans, PC screw and stabs are not ready. We will just add normal stabs for R2 KBD67 light kit. Okay. That confirms it. These are normal stabs. Boohoo. I guess I can't really comment on that then. Sorry guys. This is a... It comes with the tool to, to disassemble the case along with extra screws. Let me show you guys the case. This is the transparent Tiffany. Well... Be transparent if you ask me. <laughs> Looks pretty good. I agree. Totally agree. Now once again, it is the famous KBD Fans Comic Sans print right there. You guys can see that. Comic Sans, which is different than what's on their case and what's different it's different than what was on the KBD67 Mark II metal case. And there we go. You guys can see, because it's transparent, you can see that it's, it's, it's metal inserts. So when you put in the screws, you won't damage the plastic when you're taking it apart and putting it back together. Does it feel solid? I guess that's pretty much as solid as a empty plastic case, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it's the black one. This is black from the R1. Feels about the same. Is this polycarbonate? This one, no, this is ABS. Yeah. This case is made out of ABS. Did they send you a battery? No, they did not send me a Bluetooth PCB. And I suspect it's due to my open source affiliations. <laughs> the Bluetooth PCB, um, based on my, on my research, is not compliant with open source licenses. You know, I keep digging around for it, but I can't seem to find the source code attributed to it. There we go. This is the... This is the new plate. This is the injection molded plate. The original one from R1 was the CNC plate. And I can already see a few differences here. There are quite a few sprue marks here. Here, let me actually pull out the R1 plate. Our one plate. There we go. This is an R1 plate. An R1 plate, the top texture is very rough, and the smooth side is facing the PCB. In the injection molded, molded instance, both sides are rough feeling. Neither side is smooth. 
but still not as rough feeling as the CNC. How does that translate to feel? Uh, probably can't tell the difference. How does it translate to sound? Probably can't feel the difference either. But here, here's one thing I noticed. Um, on R1, the standoffs are connected to the to the PCB. On R2, the standoffs are connected to the plate. Let's see, they're they are not removable. Yeah, they're not removable. There's no screw on the other side either. Interesting. Okay. All right, in terms of flexiness, yeah, they look molded in. Here, let me show you guys. That gets rid of the of the destabilizer mod then. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of flexiness. Oh, in terms of flexiness, maybe because this has the has the standoffs in it, but the R2 one, just based on my unscientific shaking here, um, this seems stiffer than this. It can't be removed for flex tuning. Yeah, see, is this one? Let's see. Let's see if you guys can see a difference in the flex. <laughs> Watch me crack it, right? Here, this is the R2. <laughs> this is the R1. Not sure if you guys can see that. See how flexy it is. <laughs> but the R1 definitely feels flexier to me. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. And yeah, you can see sprue marks on the R2. There are quite a few of them all around. Whereas the R1 is completely free of said screw marks. Follow says R2 looks stiffer. Hold them in the same hand and wiggle them. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so you guys know like when you go to the gym, there's that those long ropes that you can shake, right? To like, I don't even know what like muscle group that that exercises, but that's like with plates. <laughs> this is my workout for the day, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, just based on my... on my flexing here, the... the R1 is definitely flexier. Where's the ticket to the gun show? You need to pull out the icon to get an accurate measurement. <laughs> Yeah, so, sorry guys, this is the best I can do in terms of a uh, uh, scientific explanation. Are you right or left-handed? I am right-handed. You like the R1 better? <laughs> yeah. R2 is... Actually, you know, I might have a little caliper here or so. Let's see. Where are the calipers? Calipers, where are you? It's been a while since I've used my calipers, but that's probably a good idea. Aha! There we go. Caliper. Let's see what's thicker. Calipers. Hopefully it's got battery, because I definitely do not have extra batteries for this. On. On. It is dead. <laughs> Oh well, okay, I'll just have to use like the manual one. It won't turn on on me. Okay. Let's just try. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. R2 is thicker. Icrometer time? Yeah, I know, right? R2 is a hair thicker, from the looks of it. Using my fancy icrometer. 
R2 is a hair thicker than R1, which is probably why R1 is flexier. Flex, 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 flex. R2 is a thick boy just just by a hair, and, and I wish that my battery worked, but no. I can't turn it on, I'm just using the... Using like the scale here. How many C's thicker? <laughs> probably like a tenth of a C. Tenth of a C. Yeah. But yeah, those are the major differences between the plates. R2 is is a hair thicker and definitely noticeably stiffer. Noticeably stiffer. Interesting. I was not actually expecting that. I was expecting it to be more or less the same. <laughs> I do notice other things with the R2 plate. There are some keys here, such as the the R key. There are some grooves on the left and right side. R, T, Y, and the U key as well. So the R, the U, there are grooves on the left and right. The um, left bracket. The left arrow. I'm not sure if you guys can see what I'm talking about, but there are grooves on the left and right. I know it's super hard to see on like a transparent plate, but hopefully that... Hopefully you guys can see that groove. It's on the left arrow key. Let me know if you guys can see what I'm talking about, because it's hard to see. Yeah, it's, it's very noticeable on the R key right there. Yeah, those grooves are non-existent on the R1. Different mounting systems. You don't think the the plate is compatible? Let's go check. Okay, so the way that the KD67 light works is you've got your plate, right? Then you've got your silicon, your silicon dampener. You put it under there, and then you put that on top of the PCB. That's how it works. So, I have the silicon from R1 right here. So let's, let's compare it. Just from eyeballing it, they look identical. Oh, last piece is the foam. This foam looks identical, actually. One side is rough, one side is, is smooth. Nothing special here. Well, says Merlin, what do you plan on doing with the boards now? Now that you have three of them? Um, I think I want to be creative a little bit. I want to mix and match the, the Tiffany with my white. I kind of want to like swap the tops between them. So I would have one board that has a Tiffany bottom and a white top and one board that's a white bottom and then a Tiffany top. No, just cuz. And in terms of the blackboard... In terms of the blackboard... Okay, so when I first did the KBD67 light unboxing, I theorized that with, with, with a very slight modification, you could actually use the bottom to fit the metal KBD67 Mark II. So now that I've got an extra one, I'm gonna put that theory to the test. I'm gonna like, I've isolated a few notches. I think there were three in total that I think I could, I could like cut off and then it should, or rather it might fit my KVD67 Mark II. And by doing that, I should hopefully get better sound. All right, let's go take it apart. It comes with this fancy tool. Um, earlier someone was asking me if they had to, if you had to buy tools to do it because they were going to build theirs while they were in a hotel. Um, the thing is, you know, it comes with this tool, right? But you still need a regular screwdriver to, to mount the PCB. What's the possibility of cracking the case with tightening? I'd say very little, simply because it comes with metal inserts which I will show you in just a bit. 
There we go, see? Metal inserts. Consistent with R1 and R2. Dawn Bros redeemed hydrate, thank you. How much was this as Grizzy? Um, the group buy currently states that it is $135. The R1 was 109. So I do want to tell you guys that if what you've seen so far doesn't impress you about the R2 and you still think the R1 is better and you are here in the United States, Divinity is actually selling 600 in stock units of the R1. So the R1 only comes in black, white, and transparent black. And they're selling it tomorrow. They ship out of California. And if you use discount code WIZARD, which is what I am here, um, you can get an additional 5% off. So there are only 600 units available, and I suspect they will go very fast. So let's see, let's see if I can grab you guys a better time here. The time that the R1s will release on Divinity is 11 a.m. PST, and maximum of three per household. Maximum of three per household, and they have 600 units. Um, on KBD fans, originally they were 109 bucks, but Divinity is selling it for 129.95. Divinity. So here, let me um execute the exclamation point Divinity command. Actually, if someone could do that for me, since I don't have my keyboard plugged in. See, there we go. Okay. okay so this whole assembly sits snug right there, right? So if you were to take off the plate, will it still sit snugly? It will. It will. But as you guys can see, it's starting to sag a bit. So if you were to just put like a PCB under there, um, it might not be properly secured. Right? Do that, it's like sagging already. So, I'd say not, not a good idea to not have the plate. Definitely keep the plate on. But yeah, this, this is a completed R1. This is the keyboard that I've been working on. Um, you guys can catch the build stream and the original unboxing of this, but I've been very happy with this board, and I suspect I will be just as happy with R2. Yeah, this one's running Gateron Yellows, Gateron Milky Yellows, Milky Top Yellows, along with GMK Godspeed. I've said it many times ago, but I think this guy... This KBD67 Lite is probably the best product KBD fans currently has. Right? And I expect them to sell many of them. I expect them to do a great job. Can you so show us the RGB? Yeah, sure. You plug it in. This is with the KBD67 Mark II RGB PCB. There we go. So if he says, what PCB did you get? Did you get the Bluetooth version? No, I did not. I got the regular wired version. And I've theorized as to why they did not send me the Bluetooth mo um, Simply because I do work in open source products and I champion open source a lot. The Bluetooth module, based on my research, based on me looking at a bunch of code on GitHub, asking questions to people, I've not been able to find source, source code for the Bluetooth unit. As a result, that could mean that it does not comply with, with open source licenses, right? You know, and me being a part of QMK and also professionally, I work in an open source environment. It, it just, it is a breach of ethics, in my opinion. Um, if you guys want to know more about GPL and about why it's, bad to not comply with open source licenses. I'm sure you can look it up. There are plenty of talks on YouTube and there's pl plenty of articles on Google as well. Like like Google made them themselves. So yeah, um, I think they did not send me the Bluetooth module because I would have completely harped on it. 
You know, so they just sent me the regular one. At this point, I've got so many of these PCVs. <laughs> Why is it hard to find Bluetooth QMK boards? Um, personally, I think a lot of the community hasn't is not completely sold on Bluetooth yet. So if you're trying to develop a board, right, you're not you're not gonna expand much of your energy in that, right? Now also, also in terms of QMK and Bluetooth in general, Bluetooth code a lot of the Bluetooth code is not open sourced. Or the ones that are open source have a very very uh what do you call that it's it's a license that's not compatible with the qmk license so it's really hard to merge the two which is why you have new projects now such as zmk which is specifically aimed towards bluetooth keyboards there we go see also the nordic licensing is open source hostile there we go yep Yeah, there's like a lot of things that happen in the programming world, you know, so that's that's one of the major reasons, too. Of course, someone could definitely just write Bluetooth from the ground up, you know, someone, if anyone feels extremely motivated, if someone feels extremely, <laughs> if someone's extremely talented, you know. Feel free to write a Bluetooth implementation that is GPL compliant and introduce it into QMK. Like, I for one do not have that kind of talent, nor do I have that kind of time. So, <laughs> you know, I will leave that to my betters. Grizzly said it makes sense for security. Yeah, 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 you, you could argue. Like, if you're trying to exploit Bluetooth in a way, um, and... The Bluetooth implementation of a certain product is open source. You could look at the source and be like, "Where is the bug? Where is the loophole? I'm I'm gonna try and exploit that." Yeah, makes sense. Can I try mixing Tiffany in black now? Sure. <coughs> so yeah, um, courtesy of Ride Realm, we will mix and match pieces. X X comrade is I'm saying I'm just waiting for a KBD 8x light. Huh. Okay, okay. So here's my theory. So what started all of this, right? What started all of this, like all of these plastic boards that are good and cheap and all that, was the emergence of the NK65 from Novel Keys, right? If you're paying attention, you know that they just they have a new group by the NK87 which I should be getting a review unit in the next couple weeks, by the way. So you guys will see a, see an unboxing of that too. But I believe NK65 is really pushing, like, like Novel Keys has been driving a lot of these. Like they may not have the best product, but they're definitely like, you know, doing something first, right? Wow, okay. So because this is a black case, I'm having a much, much more difficult time unscrewing it. The Pioneers, yes, the Pioneers. So I suspect once this NK87 comes out and a lot of people start talking about it and when Novel Key starts doing like custom keycap themed or like the plastic version of it, you know, um, other vendors will follow suit. You'll, you'll start seeing plastic TKLs for maybe 180. Maybe cheaper, who knows. There we go, finally got it opened up. Perfect. Oops, sorry about that. I just banged my, my glass here. Okay, um, let's do this. We are going to do black top. Well, I guess I don't really have to screw it in quite yet, but here. Just, I'm gonna show you guys black top Tiffany bottom. Like so. I'm not sure if this looks good. How about Tiffany top black bottom? Tiffany top and black bottom. 
Tiffany top, black bottom. Do that. Out of curiosity, what colors do you guys like like better? Black top, Tiffany bottom, or Tiffany top, black bottom? Don bro likes black top. The Ninja Mad Bro says, "What kind of battery do you need for the wireless one?" Um, I believe they mentioned it on their website. I don't remember it off the top of my head. ZUS says, "Black top looks nice. Black top." The Peter Poppins says, "Had any experience with the Monster Gear?" Um, I do. I do. I actually have a build stream of it. If you want to check it out, um. Because this stream is based on the KVD67, I do want to keep it there. But in general, the Monster Year was probably the stiffest board I've ever typed on. Did not enjoy typing on it. Zark. Zark, this is a family-friendly channel. <laughs> hey. Black top, black top. Lots of people like black top. Black bottom keys, they make the keyboard world go round. <laughs> Golf Juliet, black bottom keys, yep. <laughs> black top. I guess most people like the black top. Black top, Tiffany bottom. Which one do I prefer? Which one do I prefer? Um, Honestly, I prefer neither of them. I much, I would, I would greatly prefer them on their own like that, to be honest. But yeah, I, I can see why the black top looks good. It's just not, would not be my aesthetic. Peter Poppins says black tops gives a super user. Oh, you are so right, dude. Dude, that is, that's a very astute observation. Is there underglow on the PCB? The KBD67 Mark II RGB PCB, which goes in here, is only in switch RGB. But you can put a solder PCB in, like what Whale is saying here, and that one has underglow. White top and Tiffany bottom would look good. Um, yeah, I think that would look good too. But I'm not, I'm not too eager to take apart my built board part yet, just because I like it. I like it so much. <laughs> Black top also hides the screws. Yes, they do. It's an astute observation as well. Look, let's look. Once you have something transparent, you see where the screws are, right? Which I think if you're going for a transparent, that's probably the aesthetic that you're going for, right? Apparently there is a listing or just the housing and the housing is 29 bucks the housing is 29 bucks so you could you absolutely could mix and match both cases for an additional 29 oh so i know that i've only said it once so i'll say it again if nothing that i've pointed out tonight about the r2 really impressed you and you're like i'll just get the r1 the r1 will be in stock tomorrow at divinity's Divina Keys is located down in California, so if you're in the United States, it'll be extremely fast shipping. They will be stocking them at 11 a.m. PST. And as you guys can see from the chat, if you use discount code WIZARD, you can get an additional 5% off. But yeah, if R1 is what you want and you're here in the United States, Divina Key is your guy. You are limited to three per household, but there are only 600 units available so it it could go fast maybe yeah so well, that's tomorrow tomorrow march 17th 11 a.m like i am very impressed with this board and and i'll say it again i believe this is the best product that kbd fans is currently selling right now in fact i believe it is better than their d65 it is better than their kbd67 mark ii better than their tofu 65 and better than their the DOS 68. 
Better than the NK65? Absolutely. The plastic ones are better, but I believe the metal variants, like the metal NK65, is better than the metal ABD67 Mark II. Zark said, will it blend? Um, yes. I I feel like everything I've watched on that show always blends. Golf Julia says, honestly, as a broke parent that loves the hobby, I'm very excited about these more budget options popping up that give us sad wallets a chance to have a very nice sounding board. Absolutely. I believe... I believe it'll take a while for you to find a better sounding board than this. Unless you spend like, you know, four or five hundred dollars worth. Yeah. Will the new R2 cases fit the R1 board? It, yep, it is. It is. So these cases are an ABS injection molded. So the process to do injection molded is a company has to pay a significant amount of money to make a mold, right? So that takes a lot of time and a lot of money. So once you do that, you typically don't change your mold within months, really. See, so which is why even R2 has the exact same horrible KBD Fans logo, Comic Sans, right? You know, it costs a lot to make an injection molded mold. But the long-term benefits, if you produce lots of parts with it, is substantial. It's faster to produce, and it's also cheaper to produce. All right. Anyway, thanks guys for joining in. Um, this stream has been going on for, for, for two hours. Hopefully I've, I've answered all the questions that you guys have asked. Um, if you feel like you've missed any, this stream will be available as a VOD here on Twitch. And will be cleaned up, shortened, and I'll have lots of graphics in it come YouTube time in roughly probably 28 hours from now. So yeah, yeah, definitely rewatch this if you if you have any questions. But on Thursday, on Thursday, I will be rebuilding or I will be building this in the same way that I built the R1, and we'll be comparing them. Like tonight, all I did was unbox it. But Thursday, I will actually compare it with an R1 to, to determine whether or not that thicker, stiffer plate makes a difference. Alright guys, thanks for joining in. And hopefully I'll see you all on Thursday. Alright guys, have a good rest of your Tuesday night. And stay safe. Ciao.